Uh, second Timothy 2.15. All right. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Ever heard that before? Uh -huh. I left it in the King James because I wanted, I wanted it to sound just like everybody else remembers it. <laughs> right. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand and say, do a quick prayer so we can get our spirits right. Amen. Amen. Lord God, thank you so much for this week, this year, and everything you brought us. Help us to understand the word. Help us to receive it. Help us to dig into it more and more. And help us to understand what you want us to do with this life, which are what you want us to do for the kingdom, and what work you want us to do for the kingdom. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Okay, so this lesson is titled, How to Study the Bible and Why. Okay, so go ahead and throw up that first picture. Oh, actually, it's my only picture. And it's a little hard to read. I took a gamble with it. I thought maybe you guys could read it, but I'll read it too. <clears throat> Okay, this is a snapshot I took at the Museum of the Bible in Washington. And I don't know why, but this little bit here just helped me to understand the Bible a little more. Okay? So it says, what's in a name? <clears throat> the Bible is a collection of books. The Bible is a series of separate books gathered by Jews and Christians over centuries. Written in Greek, Christian, compilation, Christian compilations of these scriptures came to be called, and then there's a Greek word in, in uh Parentheses there, and I can't speak Greek, but it means the books. So in English, they became the Bible. So the Bible means the books. Amen. Okay? I did not know that before I saw this. If you already knew it, you're smarter than me. Amen. <laughs> Jews know their Bible as the Tanakh, and there's three letters in there, so that's a Hebrew acronym for its three different sections. They, they got the Torah. Most people have heard of that uh, term, the Torah. That means the instruction. The Nebim, which is the prophets, so you got all your Isaiahs and different prophets like that. You got the, and the third part of that is the Ketchumim, which is the writings, so that would be everybody else. And that makes up what Christians call the Old Testament. Though some Christian traditions also include additional books under this heading, and that's a reference to the Apocrypha. So, once I saw that, it kind of pulled everything together. Instead of it just being this book I've seen my whole life, I knew I, I kind of pieced it together over the centuries, different groups, different people, hundreds of years. It's very impressive how it all stays together, how God protected his word and kept it for us, right? Amen. Yes. All right, so. So remember, perspective is important. I am going to talk about studying, but i got to set it up first. If you don't have perspective, you don't really know what you're looking at. Uh, you're a little bit ignorant, and ignorance is one of those words that's not necessarily bad, it just means you don't know. That's good. All right, so perspective. God has given us his word, okay, us in this room, his word in its entirety, and the implication is that he wants us to study it to the best of our ability. Right. He wants us to know him. Because the Bible is God speaking to us. That's right. And when we pray, we're just speaking to God, right? So God communicates to us primarily through his word. And the world at large has not always had what you have. Okay? As the Bible was being written, only certain parts were available. It, it would be like uh, getting a book with half the chapters ripped out. You just didn't have the whole story. Remember the eunuch story of the eunuch reading Isaiah? And he didn't know what he was reading? He had to give he had to have some help understanding it. Uh-huh. And then he got baptized. So in the days of Jesus, he had the Old Testament, or the Tanakh. So that was his Bible. That was Jesus' Bible. Uh, when the New Testament speaks of the scriptures, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the Old Testament, because the New Testament was being written. Get it? Right. So as the New Testament was being written, the scriptures they speak of are the Old Testament. That's right. And actually, in the King James Version, the word scripture it's only used once in the Old Testament in the book of Daniel. But it's used 31 times in the New Testament because there are callbacks to the Old. Okay? We'll give you an example here. John 7, 42. 
Hath not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? Okay, so they're talking about the scriptures there. What scripture are they talking about? That's a call back to Micah 5 2. Micah 5 2, there you go. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephraim, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Now that, uh, don't let that Bethlehem Ephraim throw you off. Ephraim just means, and I know I'm butchering the pronunciation, sorry. What it means is fruitful. Okay. They did that to differentiate between two different Bethlehems that there were in that time. They wanted you to know exactly where this person was going to be born, Jesus. And it's also a dual uh, scripture because it's also talking about David. David was the ruler of Israel. Jesus will be the ruler of Israel. Make sense? The only reason I know that is because I studied it a little bit and, and sought out that knowledge. So I'm, I'm leading up to something here. So the whole Bible was still taking shape, right? Up until the time the book of Revelation was written. Then the church canonized the books together. And we got our batch of 66 books that we use today. But that was still a long time ago, um, relatively speaking, you know. Uh, none of us were there when it happened, okay? It was, it was a while back when they did that. Um, so we're truly blessed, okay? We really are. If you look back to the centuries of the Middle Ages, so the Middle Ages would have been about year 500 to 1500, pretty big span of time. Most people were illiterate, okay? They didn't have a Bible, they didn't have access to a Bible, and they only knew what their church told them. So they would go to church, hear the sermon, kind of like we're doing right now. But by contrast, okay, to today's time, we all, we all know how to read. I'm going to say that with pretty... A pretty good authority. I'm pretty sure nobody in here doesn't know how to read. We all have access to the Bible, right? Physical copies, digital copies. So don't just come to church and listen to me or pastor or whoever else and be satisfied by that. That's right. You're not stuck in the Middle Ages. You can read for yourself. That's right. That's good. Come on. And if you can't read, listen. They got audio Bibles. That's right. <clears throat> so. That being said, we've got a little bit of perspective. We're going to go into a few study tips that I like. It may work for you. It may not work for you. I don't know. But we've been going over some stuff recently in here. And, and, and uh, just like a prayer life is important, the, the other side of that coin is your, is your studying. Right. Okay, you can pray, 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 but you need to focus it a little bit and hear what God has to say, what he wrote down a long time ago. So find your favorite Bible translation, but don't be afraid to use others, okay? Um, that being said, you got to be careful because you want to avoid versions that use too much paraphrasing, okay? You want to be able to understand the language, the original language, but you don't want to feel like you're reading a different book. Anybody ever come across a translation and you read it and you put it up against King James and you're like, That's, that doesn't look like the same thing. That's right. Okay, there's a few like that. A lot, most of the Bible translations are very good. Um, I use the ESV, King James Version, New King James Version. There's a ton of them out there. As long as you read the Bible, you're good to go. So there's a lot of different uh, specialty Bibles, right? Anybody ever been Bible shopping before? They got a whole big block of them there. They have different notes and focus areas and things like that. I have a, a study Bible, which is one of the ones with the text and then the notes down below, like somebody's commentary. I got a prophecy Bible that outlines all the different verses that are prophecy. Uh, I got a Bible with like bits of sermons and wisdom from a pastor I like. Um, I got an archaeology Bible that has all the different uh, archaeological digs over the years and pictures of things that you know I wouldn't. Otherwise, I have access to it. I, it brings it all together into a focus area, right? So they're all good, but they're all good for different situations. Still, all Bible. Now, cautionary note: those uh, those notes in the in those Bibles, those extras, if you will, uh, can mislead you, though. Okay, 
Remember that those are all written by men, and it's their take on Scripture. That's right. All right? You still have to read the Scripture for yourself before you sign on to somebody else's idea about what God's all about. Right. That's right. Okay? God gave you a mind. What did they say? Maybe your mind is a terrible thing to waste. Something like that. <laughs> Reading is fundamental. All those different slogans. And in actuality, the names of the books of the Bible and all the chapters and verses, those were also added in later by men, okay, to help the study and reference. Okay, nothing wrong with it, just saying, when somebody got Paul's letter in Corinth, it didn't say Paul's second letter, verse 1, chapter 2, you know, it didn't say that stuff. That was added in later. Okay, I'm going to give you a perfect example so you can just be careful with this sort of thing. I'm not trying to scare you away from these different Bibles, I'm just saying it's worth looking into. I got that study Bible, okay, it's a MacArthur study Bible. John MacArthur. Okay. Already I can see the eyes rolling. I didn't know who he was when I bought it. I just bought it. But first uh, first Corinthians 2.13. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and read the scripture. As soon as uh, Mr. Cole throws it up. First Corinthians. You mean twelve thirteen? Yes, is it wrong? Okay, I'll read it out loud then. Don't worry about it. It says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. What do you think they're talking about there in First Corinthians? By one spirit are we all baptized into one body. It's a reference to spirit baptism, or as we all say here, getting the Holy Ghost. Okay? So I wanted to see what old John MacArthur had to say about that. Now I started in Acts 2 4. Which is, I figured he would have something controversial to say in, in the book of Acts when the apostles and all the people in the upper room were speaking in tongues. Yes. Okay? Yes. He didn't say anything right away in that note. He referenced me to 1 Corinthians 12 13. So then I read the note that was there. Okay? And so here's part of it. The note says in part there cannot be any believer who has not been spirit baptized. This is not an experience to see, but a reality to acknowledge. That's good. See what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's his opinion. his opinion. He comes from a different area, different wall, okay? Um, he, he goes on and on. The mental gymnastics are just prodigious here. And he's trying to really want to say that speaking in tongues is not necessary, but he pulls back on it a little bit and doesn't explicitly say that. Okay, because I think he knows different people read his stuff. So he's not trying to offend people. But that's an example of one of those notes that you have to really look back at the scripture and make sure that what this person is saying is, is good or not, okay? Um, just don't take the expert's word for it. Okay, moving on to a different subject. We got digital versus hard copy resources. Okay. This wouldn't even been talked about in church 100 years ago. But we have digital Bibles and we have other resources, okay? They're awesome. Use them. I do. Okay. You can access the information you need in seconds versus scouring books for exactly what you need. So there is benefit to it. However, we experienced in our last power hour, right, with Hurricane Helene. Okay, you can't rely on this digital technology to be accessible all the time. I mean, my laptop, based, I thought it was broken. It was just disconnected from the internet for a little while, and I couldn't start it. I couldn't do anything with it, and I rely on my computer a lot. So. The internet can be censored, okay? It can be turned off if the power is being wanted to. It has to be one word free, I don't know about that. But if you have printed Bibles and you have other resources, books that are not the Bible, uh, you'll always have those available unless book burnings come back into popularity. And if that happens, you better make sure that you've got God's laws written on your heart. Because right. you can keep them safe there. But if you don't know anything, there's nothing in there, right? That's right. So let's talk about the same thing. Spiritual books other than the Bible. Okay. I used to have a hard time reading. I mean, I, I would read like one book a year and think that that was great. I would read so slow and try to understand everything. And the Lord got me past that. And now I read a little faster, like, like five books a year. <laughs> you know, it's still not great, but... Um, you do need to read. Reading is important. Okay, it is important. Um, 
But just take care when you read these books, okay? Again, they're written by men. They can be invaluable resources, or they can lead you down some doctrinal path you shouldn't have taken. Okay, so to do this right, you have to vet your authors. If it's a book written by a trusted Bible teacher or a pastor that you know, you can be pretty sure it's safe, right? So you can start there and be okay. But don't trust the flashy cover, and for sure, don't trust the spirituality section of your local bookstore. That's right. Okay, they'll put they'll put books on witchcraft right next to your Bible. That's right. <laughs> and you won't know the difference. I'm in the spiritual section. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> People come up with all kinds of crazy ideas and write books about it. That's right. It don't mean it's true. Um, so if what you're reading seems off a little bit, like you're reading it from something that's just, ask somebody, somebody you trust in the church, if this makes sense to you. What do you think about this? Okay? Because sometimes a second opinion goes a long way. Uh -huh. And believe it or not, that'll, have, that'll also check your pride a little bit. I mean, I would probably have a hard time doing this personally, but I remember one time talking to Beverly about some things that we were both looking at that were the same, and we discussed it a little bit, and that helped me. But um, it'll check your pride, it'll help you with your humility a little bit. Right. Don't just keep reading and just absorb it in if you're not sure. That's right. Okay? Again, go back to the Bible. The Bible will prove the Bible. If it's right. saying something that doesn't seem right, go back and check your first resource, which is the Bible. Okay, the next thing. Establish a list of trusted Bible teachers, okay? You want to start with your own pastor, okay? Why? Because he's your primary teacher. Amen. He's been anointed by God to run this church where your buttocks are sitting right now, okay? Amen. So that's where you start. A lot of people start on the internet, and the process is, is backwards. Okay, so you can't rely just on, on digital pastors, okay? Uh, you got YouTube and you got other media, okay? But the Bible tells us that we're to assemble to get that interaction, okay? What's this verse I'm talking about? Am I just making something up? Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. Good, we got that scripture. All right. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Okay, so we're supposed to assemble and hear the word. You're here now, so you're doing good today. Um, keep coming. So you want to try out those several teachers, okay? You, if, you, if this is your one voice, then you're, you're cheating yourself a little bit. You want to try out several teachers. You can use the old faithful YouTube, okay? This is great and totally wrong at the same time. If, if I can find anything I want on YouTube, that's right. I can find somebody that thinks the earth is flat on YouTube and they'll tell me all about it. And if I listen long enough, I'll be convinced the earth is flat. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's not. I know it's not. And they'll, they'll quote Bible verses telling me it's flat. Be careful. That's right. But you got all kinds of stuff. DVDs, physical books, you can search Google, you can get recommendations from church friends, and they say, hey, you need to listen to such and such uh, teacher or pastor. Remember Austin told me one time, uh, Tuttle, right? You like him? Mm -hmm. Okay. We heard some Tuttle on the way to church today, too. I like him. He's good. He's real good. He didn't make my top ten. But I like them. Right, 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 right. But that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You can take recommendations from people and check them out and listen and see, yeah. see what they're all about. Now, you want to weed out the ones who veer from core doctrines of the Bible. Okay? And you should know this pretty quickly because it will make their teaching different. Like, If somebody wants to get famous, YouTube famous, they want to do something that's different than other people. But difference not necessarily great when you're talking about the Word of God because you can't change the Word of God, right? Right. You don't want to do that. That should make you uh, sort of the hairs on your neck stand up kind of thing. We were warned about that too. 2 Peter 2 1. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, 
bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Right. Okay. Because until that swift destruction comes, they're going to fool a lot of people. So don't be one of them, okay? If you have a mind, use it properly. That's right. But once you have several teachers that you can rely on and, and trust, then you can dive into all their stuff. They usually write books and videos, etc., etc. So you got plenty to pull from once you are safe in your sources. This kind of sounds a lot like when you were in school, you know, and they'd tell you to, you know, cite your work, and you'd go and pick up something, and they'd be like, oh, well, don't use Wikipedia. We'll never accept Wikipedia, because that's not a trusted source. It's the same, I'm talking about the same kind of thing, except we're talking about the Bible, and that's much more important than writing a school paper. Amen? Right. Amen. All right, so the goal is to have many different opinions when studying, so your only option is not the Bible. So you're not just sitting there at the table with the Bible only. Now, if that's your thing, go for it. If that works for you, that's great. You don't need anything else, but I have, I have a suspicion you might be kind of like me. If, if I, would, I would read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible, read the Bible, and then I would start to glaze over, you know, and I have to stop for a while. So a little variety in other people's take on the same kind of scriptures you're reading does help. But if you just like to use your King James Bible and that's it, then go for it, brother. You want to also maybe establish a list of subjects that you like, okay? You're going to gravitate toward one part of the Bible or another, whether you consciously realize it or not. Uh, if you have certain figures from the Bible that you admire, you know, you can do a deep dive on them and find out all the stuff about, I don't know, like, I, I sort of like the Raya the Hittite, okay, from 2 Samuel, yeah. So I did a lot of research about him and the Hittites and all the stuff surrounding that. So you can keep going and going and going and going, and you'll never run out of stuff to study. Um, if you have a favorite subject, you know, such as Bible, history, prophecy, life of Jesus, whatever, then focus in on those subjects. It gives you a little bit of clarity, right? If your goal is to finish the whole Bible, okay, you'll get a little bit of everything. But I always found that to be kind of an intimidating task. I mean, you, you get past the first five books and you get into all the names and a lot of people just get lost, you know. But start with a little goal, you know. Pick one book of the Bible. It can be a short one, you know. Read the whole thing. Reread it. Reread it. Just study it for a month. Just go and find out what other people say about the book of Jude. That's a little short one. Keep looking. Keep researching. You'll be amazed about what's out there and how much you can find. So, I kept this lesson pretty, uh, pretty low key, pretty like a, more or less like a true Bible study, so the pastor can rile you up and get you all emotional and and, and get us all in the spirit when we speak in tongues and run the aisles. Amen. Right, right, right. But we don't need, we don't need to ignore these kinds of subjects because they are important. Yeah, right. Good. All right. Just as a prayer life is super important, your study life is also important. That's right. So. Uh, what can it lead to? Studying the Word, okay? It leads to personal growth. Everybody should want that. It can lead to a better understanding of the universe and the God that created it. That's right. Good, right? It can help you get rid of some false ideas that you might have been holding on to that somebody told you that your Uncle Billy Bob told you, you know, 20 years ago and you just believed it your whole life. And then you read it in the Bible and go, oh, that's not true. I saw a meme today that was kind of funny about her. Guys in the coffin and he's got his head sticking up. And somebody at the funeral is saying, Oh, he's an angel now. And the guy pops his head up and says, That's bad theology. <laughs> <laughs> you don't die and turn into an angel. <laughs> but studying can also lead to your ministry, okay? It can lead to what God wants you to do for your kingdom work. Right. And if you're gonna if you're gonna find that out, he's not just gonna send you a letter or mail it to you, you're gonna have to seek it out and figure out what God wants you to do with your life. So I, I titled that lesson, uh, How to Study the Bible and Why. Okay, so we covered um, the how, but here's the why. Because God wants you to know without him, okay? He just does. And that's the primary way of figuring that out. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is read a, read a verse, and this is going to confirm that. Proverbs 8 and 17. It says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Okay? you got to go looking for God. Sometimes he reveals himself, but a lot of times 
He wants us to do so that we're going to go look for him. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen? All right. That's all I got. If you want to bring up some of the singers and go grab the kids. Sorry, I probably should have warned you before this. Let's go ahead and close the prayer real fast. All that happens. So if you got something to do, keep coming. Keep coming up here. Lord, thank you for helping us to hear some scripture today and realize, hopefully, that we need to look into your word more than what we have been. Everybody has room for improvement, and we should be able to acknowledge that and realize that we can dig a little deeper, we can study, and we can pray a little harder.